Hi everyone, thank you for joining me on this lesson today where we're talking about congruent triangles. So, so far in this chapter, we've talked about what it means to be acute, obtuse, right, uh, scalene, isosceles, all that good stuff and all the special properties that all of those triangles have. But today we're gonna be talking about what it means to be congruent. So the definition of congruent is that you have geometric figures that have exactly the same size and shape. So congruent, same size, same shape. Like my two hands are congruent to each other. They're the exact same size, same shape. If I had my hand and let's say a little baby hand, those would be similar. Similar is when they're the same shape, but different sizes. So congruent means the exact same shape with the exact same size. A congruent polygon means that all parts of one polygon are congruent to all corresponding parts of the other polygon. polygon. So all the angles would be congruent to each other, all the sides would be congruent to each other. So here it says, identify all congruent corresponding parts, then write a congruence statement. So when we talk about two polygons being congruent here, so here I have two quadrilaterals. Um, they look like trapezoids, but we don't know that for sure. We're just gonna call them a quadrilateral based on the fact that they have four sides. And you can see when you have congruence in polygons, we use an angle marker, like this one curve here, to show that this angle A is congruent to this angle E. So when you see one curve here in this angle and that same one curve that in that angle, that would mean that those two angles are congruent. And remember, the symbol for congruence looks like an equal sign with a squiggly line above it. Um, if I talked about angle B, I could see angle B has two curves, and that matches up with angle F. Angle C has three curves, so that matches up with angle G. And angle D has four curves marking it up, which goes with angle H. So I can clearly see in these two diagrams, all four sets of angles are congruent to each other. And then I would look at the four sides. So side AB, you can see I have that one marking that matches up with EF. BC has two markings that matches up with FG. Segment CD has three markings, which lines up with GH, and DA has four markings, which, which matches up with HE. You'll see I also go in the same order when I'm talking about it. So if I talk about segment DA, notice it goes from the angle of four markings to the angle of one marking. So I made sure when I listed the other side that went along with it, I didn't call it EH, I went HE, because H corresponds with D, and angle E corresponds with angle A. Now, when you have two figures and you can prove that all of the angles are congruent to each other and all of the sides are congruent to each other, then we can officially say, hey, that means that these two polygons must be congruent to each other. So polygon ABCD is then congruent to polygon EFGH. And when you make that listing, you want your letters of your figures to correspond with each other. So if angle A corresponds with angle E, Notice it starts with A, and then my second polygon starts with E. A corresponds with B, C corresponds with G, and D corresponds with H. In this diagram here, it says triangle ITP is congruent to triangle NGO. Find the values of X and Y. So now, if you're told that two figures are congruent to each other, then we know that means all of my angles are congruent to each other, which means their measures are equal. All of my sides are congruent to each other. The corresponding sides are congruent to each other, which means that, again, those measures of those sides are equal to each other. So let's take a look at this. Um, if I want to find the value of x, I see x minus 2y is here. And side ng, okay, if I underline it in my um, description, ng goes with it. So I know this 7.5 corresponds with x minus 2y. Now, unfortunately, I can't solve for x because I've got the variable y there. So let's take a look at something else. Um, this angle is 6y minus 14, and that's angle O. And angle O should be corresponding with angle P. So this angle here should be equal, because they're congruent to each other, this 40 degree angle. So I could definitely solve for y here first. I would then be able to say, okay, well, 6y minus 14 is equal to 40. And I would just do my good solving steps, and I would be able to get that y is 9. And now that y is 9, I can actually now go ahead and solve for x, because I can say 
x minus 2y is equal to 7.5. And I could substitute that 9 in for my y. And then I would be able to go forward and with just some basic math be able to calculate my value for x. So we have to make sure we use the letters in our congruence statement very carefully because that helps us not only match up what sides are congruent to each other, but also what angles are congruent to each other. Now, something else we need to make sure we are completely aware of is how to deal with proofs when we're talking about congruence. And get ready, because there's a lot of proofs that are about to come up in our next few lessons. So this is just kind of a starter proof into congruence. It says here, given angle L is congruent to angle P, and it's marked up in my diagram, but I just want to kind of color code what I'm looking at. Okay, so L, angle L is congruent to angle P. Then it says line segment LM, this segment here is congruent to PO, segment PO. All right, so that's that. We're also given that LN is congruent to PN. So this segment here is congruent to PN, okay? And we are also told that segment MN is congruent to segment ON. So we're given all of this information. And now look what we're actually given. We're actually given that all three sides of this triangle are congruent to all three sides of this triangle. And look what it says to prove. It says to prove that triangle LMN is congruent to triangle PON. So we have to think about what we learned about congruence. Congruence means same shape, same size. So here, I see all of my sides are congruent to each other. If I want to prove that the two triangles are congruent, I would be able to say, well, okay, I have all my given information, right? And something else I know I can say here, and I need all my sides match up, I'm given one pair of angles that's congruent, but think about other things about angle relationships that we've learned so far. Not only are angle L and P congruent to each other, but can we make a statement about another set of angles here? Okay, think about what that might be. What we can say is that angle L and M, so this angle here, is congruent to angle P and O. Now, think about it. What kind of angles are those? Why do we know they're congruent to each other? Did you think about it? That's your vertical angles theorem. That's a pair of congruent angles by the vertical angles. So look at this. All three sets of sides are congruent. They're matched up. One pair of angles was congruent. And now we know for a fact that another pair of angles is congruent. Now, this next reason is actually going to be a brand new property that we're going to put like in our toolbox of things that we can use for proofs going forward. If you have two congruent angles in a triangle, two pairs of congruent angles in a triangle, then by definition, and this is going to be called the third angle theorem, the third angle has to be congruent to each other. Okay, so and this makes sense. Like if you had two triangles, they both had angles of 150. So one angle was 100, one angle is 50. And then you have another triangle that also has angles of 150. Well, the third angle in both of those triangles, they both have to be 30 because we know triangles add up to 180. Their measures of their angles add up to 180. And so by default, you know they're going to have to be the same measure. And if they're the same measure, then it means that those angles are congruent. So we're going to be able to say that angle LMN, this angle here, is congruent to angle PON. And again, that's called the third angle theorem. So when you're given two sets of congruent angles, two pairs of congruent um, angles, the third angle is definitely going to be congruent to each other. And now look at this diagram. You have all three sides corresponding with all three pairs of angles corresponding. So now that everything is marked up, I'd be able to say that these two triangles are definitely congruent to each other. And now here's the other little tidbit, ready? Our new reason. It's called CPCTC. And what that actually stands for is that corresponding parts of congruent triangles, oops, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And I'm just going to uh, zoom out there a little bit so we can see our full screen. So what this is basically saying is if I have all of these corresponding parts, all of the corresponding sides, all of the corresponding angles, if they are congruent, 
Well, that would mean that the two triangles would have to be congruent to each other. Okay, we abbreviate that statement by just saying C C P C T C, and that reason is definitely going to pop up later on in some other proofs. We're going to be learning in our next lesson or two some kind of shortcut theorems that we can also use to prove that these two triangles were congruent without even going through all of this step. But once you have all, everything matched up, this is the reason that we end up giving. And we can abbreviate it again by CPCTC. Okay, let's look at our second proof, which is actually our last proof. I'm going to see if I can zoom in just a smidge. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so here is what we are given. We are given that angle J is congruent to angle P. All right. We are also given that segment JK is congruent to segment PM. We are given that JL, segment JL, is congruent to segment PL. And we are given that point L bisects KM. So this point L bisects KM. So now I have to think about what does that mean, guys? If you have a point that bisects a segment, then we can use the definition of um, a segment bisector to make a statement going forward. So we are given everything we're given. We've got two sets of sides um, marked up as congruent. We have one pair of angles that's set up congruent. So something we're going to be able to say, and we use this in the previous proof, is, well, okay, this angle JLK is congruent to angle PLM. Remember what that theorem was? That theorem is vertical angles theorem. All right, so that works out. We can then also say, and this is going to go based on the bisection, that LK, segment LK, is congruent to segment LM. Now, it says here that L bisects KM. So if you're talking about a point bisecting a segment, remember we learned about segment bisectors, that's just gonna be the definition of what a segment bisector is. Okay, so if you're told that a point bisects a segment, you can say that th those two segments are then congruent to each other, just like definition of angle bisector. We've used that in previous proofs. Now notice all I'm missing is the third angle uh, matching up, but we used this in the previous proof that angle K is congruent to angle M. And remember that is now what's called our third angle theorem. And now notice all of our segments are corresponding to congruent segments in the other triangle. All of our congruent angles are corresponding with each other. So I would be able to say that triangle JLK is congruent to triangle PLM. And that is by CPCTC because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helps. Bye.